Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. In this one, I'd like to talk a little bit about salt therapy for chest disease. So I think that's really interesting. And uh, it's just, a, there's a lot of questions that come to the channel in real life about salt products, salt pipes, nebulizers with saline solutions and things like that. And I'd like to just sort of cover a couple of these things in this episode. And this comes based off a question that I received uh, recently. It's this one. So what is your opinion for inhalers that work with saline drops? Uh, there are many in the market with adult and baby masks to inhale saline drops. So I think this refers to nebulizers, basically. Although there are some forms of salt therapy, which I really don't personally believe in, these things which are called salt pipes. We'll come to that in a second. I think I'd like to just tell you first about things that I believe actually work. Then I'll tell you about something that potentially could work because it has there's a lot of common sense knowledge about it. And then I'll talk about the salt pipes and why I don't think they're great. And uh, they may be a waste of money. So first of all, let's talk about saline nebulizers so saline nebulizers you may have heard of this from your doctor you may have seen them in the hospital you may have seen people using nebulizers in which they put a bit of normal saline they press a button the machine makes a sound and then it produces a mist an aerosol that you can in see that you can inhale which is salty water and you inhale that in the airways many people actually find that beneficial to some extent and I agree that in some cases there are use cases for that. So it may be actually helpful. It's not helpful in all cases though. Sometimes it can even be risky to use these. So I would say before you use any saline nebulizer, even if it's just salty water, do bear in mind that it can actually irritate your, your airways. So if you're suffering with asthma specifically, and you're getting a lot of asthma attacks, your, your airways are quite inflamed, your asthma is not under control, sometimes using too high a concentration of salty water can trigger an asthma attack. So before starting to use any of these saline nebulizers, even though they may sound super safe because it's just salty, salty water, do ask your doctor about it. So on this channel, you may have noticed that in all my videos, I try to put a little bit of a disclaimer. I am not your doctor. I don't know your case. I don't know how your body will react to different treatments because I don't know your medical history. I don't know how, how things will go. So always try to consider that any advice that you find online, even on my channel or other channels or on websites, you know, there's lots of marketing out there. There's lots of bad advice out there. So always try to seek advice for your own personal physician. Well, personal physician is a big stretch, but from your own healthcare team, people who can actually provide a consultation, that can ask you questions, they can give you feedback, they can help you if something goes wrong. Now, that being said, let's talk a little bit about normal saline. So when we say normal saline, we talk about a saline solution of 0.9% concentration. So it's 0.9% of that fluid that you are putting in the nebulizer is salt. That's normal saline. Normal saline is called normal saline because it has the same salinity as your own body's tissues. So blood is slightly salty. Mucus produced by our body is also slightly salty. So that's what we're trying to match with the normal saline solution. And if you go to the emergency room, if you've ever spent time in a hospital, you may have received an intravenous infusion. And that drip that is suspended that goes into your vein usually is normal saline in the first instance. So 0.9%, it's the same salinity of your body's tissues. It doesn't cause your cells to struggle because of osmotic pressure. So that's uh, an interesting phenomenon where the uh, electrolytes on both sides of a cell membrane, for example, will try to balance each other out to create the same salinity. It, it, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. But basically, with normal saline, if you put it in a nebulizer, what you can expect is that it will maybe humidify the airways a little bit if they're quite dry, but they won't actually draw in more, more fluid from the body's tissues to loosen the mucus. If you're using hypertonic saline, we'll discuss about that in a second, that may happen. But with normal saline, some people do find 
that act of just humidifying, breathing in that humid solution, it, they may find it beneficial sometimes to help them clear secretions or to soothe the airways a little bit. However, with all nebulizers, it's very, very important to note that some people, like I said before, can be sensitized to anything that they inhale. They, their airways may be super irritated and they cannot tolerate all kinds of things. So if you can, before you try any nebulizers, even with normal saline, I would really recommend that you ask your doctor and maybe have the first go in a healthcare setting where someone can give you some help, can give you some treatment if you're experiencing any, any new symptoms, any distress, and at least you'll know, and then it will be safer if you want to use these devices at home. But with normal saline, sometimes if you're using it without any medications, you might sometimes get a little bit of a benefit. However, psychologically, from my perspective, I think it's not the easiest thing to do. Because if you think about it, you're already having this respiratory condition, this chronic respiratory disease, whether it's COPD, asthma, bronchiectasis, whatever it is. And you're struggling with that condition. Imagine if you have to carry around this big nebulizer that makes a lot of noise, you have this mask, it's very visible, it produces this, this mist that you're inhaling, to my mind, some people may find that that looks as if they're more sick than they really are. I know that they may not, some people may not feel the same way. Some people may feel that just because they can see the actual medication going in, it's better than using an inhaler, for example. But it depends from person to person. And I would say if the benefits are not really significant, it's probably not worth going and using all these nebulizers all the time and having an obsession with using nebulizers because in reality for some people they, they may work for some people there may be no effect at all for some people rare cases it may actually get worse so it's really important to just check with your doctor whether using normal saline in your treatment regimen for your respiratory disease does really help that brings me to the point of hypertonic saline hypertonic saline is actually very useful especially for patients who do struggle with a lot of chest secretions every day. Generally, in patients who suffer with bronchiectasis, in younger patients with cystic fibrosis, it's, hypertonic saline has a very established role. It's a very evidence-based practice, and it does really help. But the caveat is always that the more salt concentration you have in the fluid that you put in the nebulizer, the higher the risk of causing irritation in the airways because the airways are sensitive to that salt that you're inhaling. Salt can be irritant. So before you start, ideally you should have a baseline spirometry. You do the hypertonic challenge with the nebulizer, and then you have another spirometry to see if it's dropped. If the levels drop, or if you're experiencing chest tightness, you're getting an attack of wheeze, it may be necessary to reduce the concentration of salt. So you're trying to really slowly go up. Maybe you go 3%, 4%, 5%. You see at which point your airways don't really tolerate it anymore. But ideally that should be done in a healthcare setting, really, just to be extra safe. But it may work. So if you're tolerating the hypertonic saline, so the high concentration of salt solution in the nebulizer, in the aerosol that you're inhaling, it may actually loosen the secretions quite a lot because what that extra salt concentration in the airways that you're generating with the aerosol does is draw in fluid through the sort of airway wall and the mucus becomes looser, more fluidy. So that helps you bring it up. So that can help, especially, like I said, if you're struggling with very thick mucus that you can't spit up. And a lot of patients with chronic respiratory disease, especially if there is an architectural distortion in the airways, if the airways are dilated or they don't have a smooth wall anymore because of distortions from fibrosis, etc. that sort of therapy with hypertonic saline can actually help. So these are, in my opinion, the normal saline and the hypertonic saline, the more evidence-based uses of salt therapy in chest disorders. That brings me to something that's been used for, I would say, maybe, would I say centuries? But probably it could be centuries. So especially in Europe, 
we have a lot of salt mines. Well, throughout the world, there are salt mines. But in Europe, the salt mines are fantastic. And I'm pretty sure in other places around the world, it's the same. But we here have used salt mines as places of therapy for, for many, many years. I would say hundreds of years. So what happens is you can actually book time to spend time in a salt mine. And I'm not sure if this is common around where you are in the world if you're not in Europe. I, I think it's probably common in other parts of the planet as well. So if, if, you, if you know these situations, do leave a comment in the, the section below. I would be curious to know your experience. But in Europe, you can book time to spend in a salt mine. So if you have a chest problem, you may be able to use it as a sort of a spa recovery treatment rehabilitation program as part of something like that and you can actually spend hours a few hours every day inside the salt mine and the conditions there are actually fantastic because you can either sit in a sort of a beach lounging chair sort of uh, thing like that you can rent a basketball course you can run around there are sometimes parties and events that are held in salt mines so if you're watching this as a video, let me just try and find uh, a couple of images. So they are fascinating places. If you've never been to a salt mine, I would really recommend you do it. Let me just swap over to this screen. So salt mines. So for example, this one in Poland, it looks amazing. You've got chandeliers, there's a chapel inside, there's people visiting, watching things, all kinds of buildings, it's like a man-made cave. It's amazing. You see, there's underground lakes. You can sometimes rent boats and just sort of row boats in this underground salt lakes and all the walls are pure salt. It's pretty fascinating. It's a pretty fascinating place. So I would say if you ever get a chance to visit the salt mine, look, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. All these things underground. You can play pool. Look, look at this. <laughs> it's it's amazing. So sorry for those of you who are listening to this program. I ju I'm just basically showing some some pictures that you can find online if you look for salt mine. There is a picture here that I'm looking at. It's uh, this is from Romania. So you can play pool, <laughs> you know, with cue sticks and balls and things like that. Table tennis probably as well. There are benches. It's like there's some pictures on the wall. It's like a mini art gallery. So quite, quite fascinating places. And I would say if you think that this is all a little bit uh, esoteric and too much, uh, too much and not really evidence-based, you're probably right. But however, the air in the salt mines is usually at a very constant temperature, very constant humidity, and it's microbiologically quite pure. So because the entire mine is salt walls ceiling floor everything is made of salt if you lick the wall of a salt mine it's salty i've done it <laughs> okay so you can imagine not much bacteria will grow there if you think about your salt jar at home there's not a lot of bacteria you would expect growing in the salt jar it's just because of the salinity bacteria can't really grow so for that reason breathing in that air at a constant temperature constant salinity clean air deep inside the mine it's probably beneficial to soothe the airways to some extent reduce the inflammation a little bit and maybe help you clear some secretions so in my mind that sounds all common sense so there may be some effect to spending time in these salt mines as part of a rehabilitation program with a physiotherapist doing these sort of exercises underground they might actually help especially if you're struggling with respiratory disease and you want to try something however that brings me to the point where we talk about salt pipes and these are some savvy business people who have actually thought about bringing the salt mine to your own home <laughs> which this is uh, for lack of a better terminology let me put up some more pictures. So if you're listening to this, I'm, I'm just basically showing some pictures of what you may find online, which is called salt pipes. You may see these marketed on TV as uh, fantastic devices for helping with everything from cough, bronchitis. Look, look at this picture. For example, this 
salt pipe. It's just a handheld device that helps with asthma, hay fever, respiratory allergies, shortness of breath, coughs, block, coughs, blocked nose, smokers, snorers. What, what else you can add to this list? So personally, when I see these sort of claims that a little device that contains a block of salt inside will help you with all these health problems, I find it a little bit sneaky, a little bit of a charlatan maneuver. Now, I may be wrong. You may not agree with me. You may think that they are very helpful, but look at it a little bit. If you think about it, look at this. Look at this device. So I'm showing the picture of a device that looks like a pipe and just has a sort of a, a little net like thing that contains um, just rocks of salt. It's placed inside and you're breathing air through those rocks, through those salt rocks. But if you think about it, you're not actually breathing the same air as in a salt mine. You're breathing the air in your room that goes in between those salt granules, salt rocks, whatever they are, and you just inhale that. But how much salinity do you think that air can pick up in the five centimeters of travel through the little pipe inhaler? So if you imagine, I'm, I'm just showing a little inhaler now, but if I were to, to put some salt in it, and breathe in from the other end, I'll probably just breathe more or less the same air as I'm breathing without the inhaler. I'm not spending time in a room that's full of salt everywhere. There's no specific humidity. There's no, I'm not breathing in some humid air that dissolves some of the salt. Uh, it's not a nebulizer that aerosolizes that fluid. So I don't really think that we're getting that much benefit from these things and some of them can be expensive like some of them can be really expensive some are cheap but like i don't know if it's useful to go for all these products and look at look how many there are look look like this this for me this this seems preposterous like I'm, it's something really small that contains salt you can probably make one yourself at home from using some sort of a little box in which you put some table salt and there you go. And will that be better if you're using Himalayan salt or whatever? It's still salt at the end of the day. Anyway, I may be a little bit cynical. I'm sorry if some of you disagree with my statements, but I have a feeling that you need to be really careful because a lot of companies are trying to sell you all kinds of supplements, all kinds of devices that are going to help your health. But at the end of the day, I think being on a good regimen of treatment, having good and healthy habits, breathing in clean air, good diet, you know, exercise, all these things are probably what will lead to good habits that will lead to health. And actually improve, if you're already suffering with all kinds of problems, health problems, probably you need to have a, a, an overview of what's good and bad in your life and try to make little improvements that actually matter rather than throwing your money away on different products that promise you the world. So apologies for my cynicism. I hope that the first part of the video was at least helpful to explain a little bit about normal saline nebulizers, hypertonic saline nebulizers. And in the second part, I just wanted to sort of give you a little bit of a, an entertaining overview, maybe I hope, of other ways in which salt has been used in therapy for respiratory disease. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any other comments, if you found any research around salt, if you've if you have a, read a scientific article that's really interesting, do leave it leave a link in the comments on the YouTube channel. I'd be really happy to to read this. So if you have uh, I I'm, of course I'm just one person, so I will never never, never be able to read all the information, all the medical literature that's out there. So if you come across something that's interesting and you would want to share, do leave a comment. If you have any suggestions for further content or any questions for me that I should address in future videos, do let me know. I'd like to grow this, this channel and the podcast. And thank you very much for watching. You can also check out the website on toplunghealth.com. And I'll see you in future episodes. All the best to you. Good health.